Nostalgia Street invites you on a retro ride that's more than just a trip down memory lane. Uncover life lessons and personal growth stories that stem from our collective past. So you can live a richer, more connected life today. Whether you're a 90s kid, an 80s teen, or simply young at heart, you'll find something to relate to in each episode. Now, here are your hosts, Vince and Jeff. Well, welcome back to another episode of Nostalgia Street. The where show where we share the stories that shape us. I thought we, I thought we, I thought we were splitting it up. He said it for me because I always mess it up. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a fun guest today. Uh, we've known her for a couple of years at least, right? For those of you who are on the uh, audio side of things, um, her name is Vicky. For those of you on the video side, so we do broadcast this show uh, with a couple of extras on YouTube. So if you haven't done that yet, go there. But uh, Vicky today is our guest, and as usual, Vince is going to start us off with a fun question for Vicky. Vicky, if there could you pick two television shows and switch their cast, but keep the same characters, what would you? Which two shows and cast would you switch? Oh, Ooh. man, that's the hardest question yet. Like, would you put the Brady Bunch in the Land of the Lost, or would you put like the Gilligan Islands crew on? I don't know. Like, what would you do? Okay. I think that I would put Gilligan's Island with Scooby-Doo on Scooby-Doo. Switch That's, those. So what would that look like? So sh would Shaggy be Gilligan? No, they're the same characters. They're just in different setting. Oh, so okay. So they'd be solving mysteries, Gilligan's Island. Right? <laughs> yes, the Gilligan's Island crew is solving mysteries. <laughs> you guys are making my head hurt. This hurts so bad. How would Scooby fare? Because there's no Scooby snacks on an island. Oh, yeah, yeah that might be rough. Do dogs eat fish? Or, or Probably coconuts. would if they were desperate enough, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> Eat coconuts. Gosh, all right. What a way to start the show. Would you call it Scooby's Island? <laughs> yeah, I like and, it. Uh, <laughs> Gilligan do? <laughs> Gilligan do. Don't step in Gilligan do. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Well, our guest today, the big reveal, is Vicki Stewart, Executive Director of the Employment, Employment Disability, Disability Resource. Resource. And she, her and her organization, well, you didn't change your names. You changed the, well, the the organization changed its name, right? right. It used to right. be the uh, South Dakota Business Resource Network. Network. Yep. Yeah, there we go. All right. So uh, Vicki is everywhere in our community here in Sioux Falls. She's all over social media. You are. Everybody takes your picture. You're next to you. You're always volunteering at the chamber. And there's no better place to broadcast your your personal thoughts and feelings than here on our show, I think. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't mean that personal. All right. <laughs> All right. So we always start off, Vicky, with a little bit of a trip down nostalgia lane. So growing up, and you can give us as many details or omit as many as you like. Okay. Um, what were some of the things that you and your family, your siblings, liked doing? Was it board games? Was it, um, what, are, what What was it? Sure. Well, I was born with osteogenesis imperfecta, um, diagnosed at three weeks of age. So my childhood was a little different than my siblings. I had to be very careful. So a lot of time I had broken bones laid on a cot at home or on the couch, pretty confined most of my childhood. So um, music was a huge part of my life. I listened to music a lot. It was a great time, you know, just to pass the time while I was laid up. And my siblings would play games with me, play cards a lot. I was a TV junkie because that was really one of the <laughs> only things I could do laying on the couch. Um, but they always included me in everything. And as I got older, I had fewer breaks. So then they began to offer me to go on dates with them. So they took me to the movies and played outside. And my sister and I played Barbies a lot. All right. um, played in the sandbox, did all kinds of things. And I think my some of my siblings pushed me a little bit. Um, they were always told to be careful around me, but sure. my oldest sister was a bit of a rebel. So she would sometimes take me out like on a bike ride and have me ride in front of her with no helmet or anything. <laughs> but Whoa. I had a blast. Did you fly to the moon? Yeah. Oh, so so awesome. that's why you're so fearless. You're always just wheeling around everywhere in town. Yeah. Because your sister. Yeah, she's to blame. <laughs> Shout out to the sister <laughs> so so you told us before we started airing you you broke how many bones about 40 to 45 in my lifetime man that's like evil Knievel level i know and it was wow. sometimes doing absolutely nothing that was the worst part so how long would it take those bones to heal average time 
yeah. you know, yeah. as anyone else. So at least yeah. it wasn't any longer. But so yeah. the orthopedic surgeons were making a lot of money off you. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one broken bone, and I still can't fathom forty. Wow. Especially at a young age. What, yeah. was, what was the worst or what was the one that took the longest or the most memorable? The most memorable was, again, we were pushing the limits a little and I was Uh-oh. at my cousin's and my other sister oh, was pushing me. We were playing tag. We hit a hole and I went flying forward. Oh. So it landed, uh, sprawled out, broke two legs and an arm. Oh my gosh. And I was in the hospital for quite a while after that. Wow. You're so badass. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Would you do it again though? Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah. You get cousins together or siblings, it's a recipe for it's just a, it's that <laughs> Superman thing. Joe yeah, we yeah. talked to Joe Bachelor a couple of days ago and uh he 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 launched himself out of the kitchen window like Superman. He was convinced he could fly. Oh. And uh found out he couldn't, unfortunately, <laughs> but he didn't break any bones somehow. He, oh, wow. he survived. That's crazy. So music, what were what were some of those uh favorite bands that you loved? A lot of the music that I listened to was from the seventies because of my yeah. older siblings. That's okay. what they were into. Yeah. Um as I grew up. 80s i love the cars yeah, prince yeah yeah um michael jackson sure. oh and junior high my girlfriends and i would just freak <laughs> out on friday night videos when we got to see michael jackson yeah, do the yeah. walk and all of that so yeah all types of music really and then when i was 10 i started playing the flute okay. um, my family was really active in sports so of course i couldn't do that with brittle bones yeah, so yeah. i knew i needed an outlet and i'm pretty competitive yeah. so i took up the flute and that's just been such a big part of my life playing music do you still play the flute i do yeah yeah all yeah. right we should have asked you to yeah, bring we it should have brought that on Get a road yeah. intro for what's us your, what's your favorite song you play with the flute oh boy that's a toughie I wish I could say Jethro Tull, but no, <laughs> or, I'm not there. <laughs> or what was that song that when you were able to master it, you were like, holy, mm. holy crap, I'm pretty good at this. Or, I like this. Yeah. Or, this is my thing. Okay. This was so intense. When I was in college, I was in concert band and I played the piccolo okay. too. Yeah. And so I was given a piccolo solo and I could not get it. I could not get the rhythm. So I had to go into my band director's office and practice it with him until I did get it. So the night of the concert, I was a wreck, but uh-huh. it came off and I still have it on cassette tape. So so a couple of episodes back, Vince had this song in his head. And he, it was the Shire. He, he hummed it out loud. And it was the uh, it was the theme to The Hobbit. And I watched, I should have sent you this clip. I watched it. I'm pretty sure that that is done with a piccolo, now that you say that. Oh, cool. I'll have to send that to you. The, yeah. The guy, I mean, I don't know, the, the person that played in the symphony, I'm pretty sure, is because a piccolo is like a pencil with holes in it. But right? you play it like this. Oh, well, yeah, what's, it's what's more the like one that's flute, like this? A penny whistle? Maybe that's what Maybe it was. Maybe a penny whistle. Oh. I didn't know a piccolo, so piccolo is like Just like, like a, a miniature flute. Yeah, okay. play it just like that. So mm-hmm. Vicky is a flautist. So yes. is that every, right what you uh, said? Flautist if you get paid, flutist if you don't. <laughs> wow. It's on my flute teacher. You just said that was some sass. I like that. <laughs> um, so, Vicky, every band kid has that story. The, that one time at band camp. <laughs> Oh she can't talk about that. Or maybe Whichever one you're, you, you feel comfortable sharing. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is kind of fun. In college, we had the embouchure award when we went on band trips. So you had to kiss somebody in front of everybody else. Ooh, um, so it was always scandalous. like, oh gosh, when am I going to get kissed? Who am I going to kiss? So the gentleman that picked me took me up from my seat and carried me to the front of the bus and gave me a kiss. Whoa. Yeah. Was it huh? a good one? It was, yeah. <laughs> Scale of one to ten? Eight. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, wow. Good for him. Where's he today? Um, I believe he's still around here farming. All right. Yeah. Well, good for him. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. What a gentleman. Yeah. So are there, we haven't talked about lyrics on this show. Are there, are there any lyrics that, for whatever reason, just kind of hit home for you with the music that you listen to? Okay. Well, first of all, it's funny because my husband and I talk in lyrics. We'll say oh. something and then we answer each other with the lyrics from a song. <laughs> His right. sister-in-law goes, this is weird. They talk in songs. <laughs> I'm like, I know we can't help it. So give us an example but, of that. What's that look like? Oh, gosh. 
gosh, we just did it this morning. I'm trying to think of what the lyrics were. It's, it's probably like when Jeff and I are being silly. We're like, that's me in the corner. That's <laughs> just a thing that comes up a lot. <laughs> but one song that really I feel influenced me was Forever Young. Okay. Um, Rod that, Stewart. Rod Stewart. Yeah. That was the year that I went off to college, and that was really traumatic for me, leaving home. Yeah. Very lonely time in my life, but I liked the words forever young. I kind of felt like it was my parents talking to me, like everything's going to be cool. You're yeah. going to do fine, that kind of thing. So when I was uh, when I was younger, I think this is probably high school, uh, I was a big U2 fan. And there was this girl that, uh, she was older than me, and I knew I had no shot at her. She just, she wore different things than the rest of us, <laughs> but she was gorgeous. And she came in to this print shop that I worked at. And so there's a song by U2 called Seconds. It's and like what it's about, it's basically about um, a little bit of a protest against nuclear war. Uh-huh. And so she had this beautifully drawn illustration that she'd made a poster of. And it had pictures of Gorbachev and uh, Reagan, because those were the, the oh, superpowers yeah. back then, yeah. right? And it was just, it takes, us, it takes a second to say goodbye, say goodbye, oh, oh, oh. And I f- push the button and pull the plug. And those were some of the lyrics. And um, and then just, then at the bottom, it just said, say goodbye, say goodbye. And like that was one of the first times in my little pea brain that I realized that the people that I like to listen to actually had a message that went beyond just dance tunes or rhythms or stuff like that. And so... Ever since that point in time, I just really pay attention to lyrics, or I try to. Yeah. And if I can't understand what people are saying, it bugs me. Like the Doobie Brothers, Michael McDonald, I think that – I can't understand to think that guy. <laughs> really? I love his really? stuff. Really? Oh, that's funny. He just has that really breathy kind of a thing. And I mean, I like I like his stuff. But if I can't understand the lyrics, it's so frustrating. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Now, Vicky, is there a lyric that – that's a good good segue because is there a lyric that you thought was something and then when you found it out, it was actually not that <laughs> lyric at all? Blinded by the light. I never yes. did know what they were saying. Yeah. Wrapped up like a douche. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> yes. That's, that's exactly what I thought I when know. I was a kid. I did not get it. And I remember like, asking my mom, well, mom, what's a douche? And she's like, I'll tell you later. And then she never did. Yeah, that was a good one, though. Yeah. What were yeah. the real words to that song? Uh, I think it was deuce. Deuce, yeah. Racked, wrapped wrapped up like wrapped. a yeah, maybe it's Raptor. We'll to, we keep talking about bringing a laptop. Yeah, I, yeah we probably should just. We got to do that. Yeah. So the one that I, I think I may have said this already, uh, we had to come up with new material on our childhood events, uh, was uh, that, that song, uh, Lean on Me. Yeah. When I was a kid, I thought they were saying pee on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like uh, that's disgusting. There's that that Eiffel 65 song, Blue. Da da da. I, I always thought it was I'm blue, blah blah blah, blah with like gibberish. But then you hear people make up lyrics like I'm blue. If I were green, I would die. I'm blue. If I were green, I would pee on a guy. There's so many ways that that goes, and it's like once you hear them, you can't unhear them. Oh, Bodily functions yeah. and lyrics, they're the best. We'll be right back. So what kinds of, obviously there were, you had the broken bones, and then did you have um, a wheelchair then at whatever age through grade school? What did that look like? Um, When I started kindergarten, I had two broken legs. So I was in a cast from my hips to my toes. So I had to start kindergarten laying on a cot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But once... My legs healed up, then I started using a wheelchair. But school was very scary for me. Yeah. Whole new world again, away from my mom and dad and people who knew how to treat me and how to be careful with a room full of kindergarten kids, Mm -hmm. you know. So every day on the way to school, the buses weren't accessible. So my parents had to drive me to school every day and I would physically get sick on the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't. Very scary. But probably by first grade. Things got better, and as I went, it got better and better too. So, did you um, stay in your community? Like you just, your parents stayed. Yeah, same town. Yep, I'm from like Larchwood, that. Iowa. So, gotcha. okay, um, small community. Um, they did talk about sending me to crippled children's, and I remember overhearing that, and that really freaked me out. Yeah, 
Yeah. So that doesn't I was sound like, fun at all. No, I'm like, I hope I get to go to public school. And I did. And luckily enough, it was built all one level. So the wheelchair wasn't an issue. I could get around oh, everywhere. Cool. My classmates were incredible. Yeah. Um, always wanted to push me. I had a helper every week, a new helper. Yeah. So they would push me from... Um, the lunchroom back to the classroom. They'd stay inside because I couldn't go out for recess for fear of breaking a bone. Oh, wow. So we got to stay inside and write on the chalkboard and play board games. So yeah. they always thought it was great to be my helper. So, yeah. I mean, I, I remember the, the transition from sixth grade. We had like K through six in one building and then junior high school was seven, eight, nine. And the high school was 10, 11, 12. But that transition from elementary to junior high school was one of the hardest because that's when the peer pressure kicked in. I had friends that were smoking and drinking and now people are judging people by what kind of clothes that you wear. And I mean, if you're the slightest bit different from other people, nobody let you forget it. Right. And so, girls can be cruel. Yeah, yeah. Really cruel. I've heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In seventh grade, I went through some of that. I would even consider it a little bit bullying. Yeah. Um, one of uh, my classmates wrote a hate note and signed all my friends' names on it. <sighs> Found out later they had no idea that she had done that. But yeah, pretty tough stuff. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So what... I don't mean to be labor on this, but I just think it's you have such a positive. I've never seen you say I want to beat you up, Jeff, or I've never seen you hate write hate poems or anything like that. So, so where does this positive attitude come from? Where is it? Did you learn it from somebody or? No, this is really wild because my parents always said I, they think I was born with it because they said when I was laying in traction. Um, very young, had both legs strung up in the air. Yeah. Um, I would sing, I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. Wow. So they said, you just, I don't know what it was, but you always mm. had that positive attitude. Huh. So very thankful for that, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But I think the support that I received kept me positive too. Yeah. Having a supportive family and friends. and. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we yeah. could all use a little more Vicky in our lives. Yeah. Oh, I, thanks, guys. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I mean, there. I can think of... Well, I was actually thinking about this earlier today. Oh, boy. <laughs> where, it's not where, gonna go where, bad. where are we going with this? <laughs> Be, but strap I, in, Ricky. Strap okay. in. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like you see, uh, you see these little TikToks or something like that, where you know a wife is is giving birth, and then meanwhile the husband's got a cold, and he's acting like I, I think I got to call in sick for a few weeks because this is not gonna this is not gonna be good. I mean, a paper cut or something like that, we make a big deal of that. <laughs> so I can think of people with much less to worry about who have a whole lot worse attitude than what you do, and I I think that's. To me, and I, I'm sure there's other people listening or watching that would have to say that is that you're you're just this light, and it draws people to you. Thanks. I'm gonna Thanks. get all weepy over here, <laughs> but no, I think that's true, and we we need that. But you you would hope that more people would have more positivity that they could bring because I don't know. I think I think a lot of us, myself included, there's a few challenges. Sure, I got problems, but there's a lot more to look forward to than tend to beat yourself up and have a bad day. Exactly. So I think it's kind of cool how you carry yourself. Thanks. One of the best words of advice I got was that at the end of every day, name three things you're grateful for. And that really does make a difference in my life when yeah. I end the day on a positive note like mm -hmm. that and think, and I always come up with way more than three yeah. positive things that I'm yeah. grateful for. So I think Love that's that. really cool. That is, that is. So who are some of the influences, good or bad? Mm -hmm. That uh, that you had in your your teen years. Teen years. Now this is where you can spill the tea on your brothers and sisters, <laughs> if you want to. I'm not saying she should, but or cousins or, or cousins uh, or whoever. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Junior yeah. high, um, high school. I had a lot of fun friends, um, and they treated my disability. We could kind of have fun with it. So, like when they learned how to drive and bought cars, they were like making sure that the trunk was big enough to hold my wheelchair, which I thought was oh, awesome. Nice. Every now and then they'd let me sit on their lap and try to drive. We had some <laughs> fun experiences that way, uh, let me tell you. Um, they'd carry me, they'd love to carry me. So, they'd carry me into McDonald's and 
plop me on the order counter <laughs> just to see the reaction we'd get from people. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we just had fun with it, which I'm really, really Did you ever get mad? Say, put me down. I'm not a baby. No. Don't put baby in the corner. <laughs> That's, That's what right. they said. <laughs> so, Vicky, did you ever instigate anything, pull any pranks, or have a little bit of fun at someone else's expense? Well, I was kind of a rebel in um, high of. school. Still yeah, like, are. I had a boy girl party, and oh. we, whoa, whoa, whoa. some of the boys snuck beer in through our basement window, and another one of my friend's parents found out. Uh oh. And then what happened? Uh, I remember my mom getting the phone call, and I was sitting in the living room, and I'm like, oh, this is is not going to be good. So I could hear her say, well, I wasn't aware that that happened. We would not allow beer at our house, you yeah, know, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, not good. So she gets off the phone. Well, that was so-and-so's mother. She said you had beer at your party. I'm like, um, yeah, we did. But it was just like one can. And yeah, with didn't. all the people that we had, we barely got a sip. I mean, it's not like we got drunk or anything. Yeah. It wasn't even a party, Mom. Yeah. Just one can of beer. We yeah. didn't open it. Right. <laughs> it was filled with water. Come Her on. husband gave it to us. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so how old were you then? Um, I think that was my eighth grade party. Did you get a sip? Yeah, I think I did. Did you get a can? No. Okay. Not there really can. wasn't much. All right. You know, we thought we were being sneakier than we really yeah. were, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh Rebel God, Vicky, I love I, it. I don't think my parents even know this. I was I think my first sip of booze was in high school. I had a friend that would so we uh, we had an open campus so you could leave, go get Taco Bell, whatever, eat and then come back. And somehow he had a method of getting uh uh, he he could get a fifth of peppermint schnapps or vodka, and we would pour that and we'd drink our Mountain Dew down to about half, and we'd we'd be fifty fifty with Mountain Dew and vodka. Peppermint Mountain oh. Dew. Well, yeah, I can't drink anything with uh, like peppermint schnapps and uh, hot chocolate. I can't. It takes me back to that memory. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I had a bad time with that. I know we're getting you for Christmas now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't it wasn't until then that and I did we only did this like two or three times. Uh, but that's probably my first I stayed away from the beer because it just had a weird smell to it. Yeah, I never really was a beer person. More country what was it? Country something coolers, remember? Oh, oh yeah, Wine yeah. Coolers country back not, in not the... country time, yeah. Yeah. Bartles and James. That yeah. was oh yeah. Those were good. Yeah. What about sure. you? Um how 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 censored do we need this to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up to you. We're we're the editors of the show here. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first encounter with alcohol would have been probably when I was like Eight or nine, we were at oh a co- we were at a cousin's wedding in California. We drove all the way across the country to it, and all the kids. I met my cousins for the first time, and there's these little cups on a table with like what looks like Sprite. So we're like, yeah, sweet little fancy Sprite. <laughs> we're all just drinking it and drinking oh, it, no. and no one knew. I guess they didn't have sense to put the champagne away from the kids, oh. so the kids were just grabbing it. We were just, I mean, we all took big nap. I think, yeah, but. That, that's probably my intention. <laughs> yeah, really. but it was like one cup, and it was like we're we're out for it. What do you mean, Vince and his brothers are coming over? Let's give them the booze and make them. <laughs> oh, Tony would have been like four. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so Tony had it too. I don't remember. I mean, I got to find that this picture of his brother cousins. Tony. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so okay, so the booze. That's interesting. Very interesting. So. The board games, you talked about that earlier. What were some of those favorite games that you liked? Trouble. Remember with the bubble that you'd pop? Yeah. Sorry. Checkers. My brother tried to teach me chess, but he did not have the patience for me. Was there a particular game that you, your friends and family were particularly competitive or cutthroat about? Okay, we had this card game growing up called Squeak. I have no idea why it's oh, called Squeak, but you. we would be very competitive. Okay. So you each have like a solitaire hand in front of you. So there's several decks of cards and you have to put ones in the middle and get be the first to put it there. So, I mean, we were diving over each other and yeah, we got out of control. Squeak. Were, there, were there broken bones ever? I did squeak? not break a bone doing that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, pretty what, lucky. Yeah, I hate to keep going back to the broken bones. What was the what was the craziest like something so simple and it resulted in a broken bone? 
just crawling across the back seat of the car one just time. Yep. Yeah. Wow. And it was severe enough where I had rods in my femurs to oh my stop the frequent breaks and the rod bent. Yeah. It was that bad. So, yeah, just wow. bizarre things. You stop being such a rebel, Vicky. Oh, man. I think that's why I am such a rebel because I had to sit still and just be. <laughs> it's all pent you know? up. You yeah. know? Yeah, it's all pent up. So, ever, ever like, since I've stopped breaking bones so much, now I'm like, I got to live life as long as I can <laughs> and live it to the fullest. Do you, do you throw on like a leather vest and a bandana sometimes and just go <laughs> rolling down the street? Like. <laughs> Looking for trouble? Oh, I love you know what that reminds me of? Um I competed in Miss Wheelchair America. Oh wow. And so we played let let's make a deal. So I dressed up as a Harley biker. It was nice. the best ever. J and L Harley lent me the clothes and the boots That's and fun. it we was. We should have so given fun. you the trike too. Well, yeah, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you uh so you left high school and you went to college. I know you told us about that just a little bit. So what were uh, what were those experiences like for you? Um, college again was super difficult for me. Um, the now, where was college at? At Augustana. Augustana, okay. Here in Sioux Falls. Okay. Did they let you in? You're Catholic and <laughs> Lutheran school. That's scandal. She is a uh, rebel. I am. See? Whoa, whoa. Maybe they didn't know. They no. probably checked through your backpack, make sure you didn't have any beer in there. Or anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lutheran school here. We don't do that. All right, we're getting off track here. Oh, you guys. Sorry, Gisana. Um, the, the freshman dorm was not accessible, so I had to live in the junior senior dorm. Oh, so I was by myself in that dorm the first week yeah. of school, and all my freshman classmates were at the opposite end of campus. So you uh. had. So I had, yeah, super lonely, just uh. rough. Uh -huh. um, wasn't used to pushing myself. Oh, you yeah. know, in the snow and the rain to get to classes, carrying my books. Um, just people didn't know how to approach me. Should, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. should we ask her for help or should yeah, we just say yeah. nothing? You know, we don't want to offend her. Yeah. So that was all pretty tough. In fact, um, after Christmas break my freshman year, I told my parents I was going to quit. It was just too tough. Yeah. And my dad said, oh, Vicki, I, I think it's going to get better. Just give it one more semester and we'll see how things go and he was right yeah. things got better i went on a band trip that january and made a lot of friends through the band and everything changed so so do you think and i guess this this is probably true for me let me ask you do you think that that's a common thread that you see where the first time that you are with a group of people and they're like okay she's different than me what do i say what do i do do you think that's kind of a a common encounter and and what do you what do you suggest for people who are going to be around people who aren't exactly like them how should they respond or approach sure um i think that happens all the time and i always tell people don't be afraid of saying or doing the wrong thing i'd much rather have that than have you ignore me yeah. which happens a lot too people just overlook you yeah. They pretend like you're not even there because they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So reach out. Who cares if you use the wrong terminology? I mean, that's how we learn. Yeah. I think it's pro that's probably, especially today's world where it feels like you say one thing wrong and you get canceled. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't like that myself. I think we all make mistakes. Some people make mistakes intentionally, don't get me wrong. But I do think I, I like what you said there because I do think sometimes I, I don't like the word ignorant, but I mean, maybe that's the best word to use in this case is we just don't know what to say or how to say it, or, Hey, can I help you? And I think that some people um, that have a disability are like, I'm not disabled and don't you dare call me that. And I don't need your help. And it can, you know, some people can get a little feisty, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's, 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 it, it, you kind of wish I remember uh, as a kid, there was a, uh, 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 somebody owned a, was it a Lamborghini? And on the front, it said, uh, okay, I know you're thinking it. Here are the answers on the back. And he turned around and it was, uh, he had all the like FAQs that you know that everybody was wondering for. Funny. So so it's something about, no, uh, I've never had sex in this car. Um, uh, was 165 MPH. So that would obviously be how fast have you gone? And I forget the last one. Yes, the stereo sucks. I think it says something like that. <laughs> yeah. So in some ways, you you, you kind of wish that all of us could have shirts on, 
And, you know, if you get a haircut or some people are like, oh, do you get a haircut? Um, no, I just had, you know, yeah, had my ears lower. That's what people say. <laughs> you kind of wish you had a T-shirt on, though, that would be like, okay, idiot, here, here are the answers to the questions you're wondering about me. Exactly. And I think little kids, too, that I really um, think it's a detriment when parents pull their child away from me when they want to say like, why are you in that chair? That's fine. I would rather have them ask. But when their parent like gangs them away and says, don't talk to her, then that instills that fear in them Mm -hmm. that they're not supposed to talk to people with disabilities. So I would rather, I mean, and kids are so honest, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. know, why not ask? Right, right. That's a good lesson for them to learn. Were you going to say something? Oh, no, I was just like, I mean, kids, I, when I was in a sling for a month, like, I had the little kids like, what'd you do to your arm? How'd you do that? And I was, I said, I was being dumb and silly. And, you know, and you just mm-hmm. talk to them that way. And... Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll be right back. Who are some of the role models um, that you had or still have that you were able to pull life lessons from to get into your professional career? Um, You know, I didn't have a lot of role models um, as far as people with disabilities Mm. go until I got to college. Okay. And during that stage of my life, I was in denial. I didn't think I had a disability. I didn't consider myself because I grew up in a school where I I was just like everybody else. Everybody treated me the same. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a dose of reality when I did get to college and they asked me to be a part of a group on campus, a support group for people with disabilities. And I was like, are you kidding me? I don't want anything to do with that group. Yeah. So quite an attitude I had back then. <laughs> Still a rebel. Yeah. Yeah. But the more I thought about it and the you know, struggles I was having, I thought, you know, this really might be a good thing for me. Yeah. So I joined the group and I'm so glad I did. Um, met a Native American woman who used a wheelchair. She was a great role model to me. Um, She was a non-traditional student, um, but really a good advocate. Um, I met a person who was deaf, so kind of learned how to work with people who are deaf and use interpreters. Um, Just really opened my world to the positive of disability. So what took you um, in your career path to eventually get you to where you're at today as the executive director? What did that career path look like for you? You know, I always knew I wanted to help people in some way Mm -hmm. or another. I had no idea what I wanted to major in in college. I think I changed my mind like four or five times. But the more I accepted my disability and got involved in advocacy work and education, educating people about people with disabilities, the more I kind of found my passion Mm -hmm. and that that was a strength of mine and that there were people not willing or not able to speak up for themselves. So I kind of felt like, you know, maybe this is my chance to represent them too. So that's really how it started. And I've worked in the disability field for 30 plus years now. So that's amazing. You could say I, I'm highly qualified. Right? <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Years of experience. <laughs> so the quote you left us with in your pre questionnaire was living life to the fullest. Is there an instance that really defines that for you? Hmm. I really think my trip to Ireland. Oh, I'm part Irish, and so I've always wanted to go to Ireland. And, of course, travel can be a challenge when you use a wheelchair. But um, I went with a group of six other women, and we had a blast, and everything worked out pretty good. Um, The only bad thing was that they had no accessible buses in Ireland, which really really surprised me. So we were on a tour, so my friends or sister had to carry me on and off the bus all the time, which I hadn't done that since college. (laughs) So that was a little losing my independence a little bit there. But thank God they were willing to do that. And we had a ton of fun. And um, I felt like people were really open to me over there. Like my disability didn't seem to be a big deal. Yeah. Except for the buses. Except for the buses. Come on, Ireland. Get your buses together. Get it together. (laughs) Get your buses together. (laughs) So what kinds of things did you do over there? Did you go to the uh, the Guinness factory, perhaps? Of course, oh, yes. Oh, I know. You should uh, see your T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> and there was live music, so I got to see a flautist on stage Those in Ireland. Paid, right? Yeah. Yep, got paid. paid. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, we went to the Cliffs of Moher. That was probably my favorite place. Um, Just the yeah. beauty was Dreamy. incredible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you see... Uh, 
I, I believe uh, Ireland. That's where they filmed a lot of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. So there's yes. did, well that. How long ago did you go to Ireland? 2016. Okay, was that? Yeah, I think that was on TV by then, wasn't it? Like uh, I know they do tours. Yeah, I don't know for sure. Okay, I'm not into Game. I, I bet it Thrones. was on there. But yeah. can take a company trip out there. Yeah, I think for we scouting. Should. Yeah, we can uh, have a podcast to interview some. Irish folk. And make sure those buses are now accessible. Exactly. Yeah, one of you bus drivers. Hey, pal. <laughs> the surprising realize? thing, they played 80s music in every taxi that we rode in. Nice. 80s Well, you too. Music. They I did mean, have... I'm trying to think of other Irish folk over there. Or other... Oh, they're all Irish. Um, other <laughs> Irish bands. <laughs> where, where do Irish people live, Jeff? There's a couple... Uh, I can't... Uh, Lorraine... Lorraine McKenna... Oh, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Is that her name? Is yeah. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a couple other. Uh, Big Country, where they, that I, that's not the name. Of the, there, was a, there was a song in the 80s called uh, In a Big Country, Dream Stay With oh, You. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the name of that group, but they played, a. I think they played bagpipes, so maybe they were Scottish instead of Irish. You guys have lost me. I'm only Irish one day a year. <laughs> <laughs> So what's Best a, day of your life, I bet. What's a what's a song that uh, like do you do you still like listen to eighties as you're driving down the highway or whatnot? I do, yeah. I listen to a little bit of everything though, to be honest with you. Yeah. I like hard rock, I like oh. the classics, I like yeah. Who's Pretty your favorite good. hard rock? Uh I kinda like Metallica. Boy, that's oh, that's like another come one up a lot. The M words. Really? That was Metallica. That's Joe Bachelor's first concert. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Who cool. else besides Metallica, since we talked about those guys a lot on here? Um, let's see. Poison. I was a big Poison fan. What was right. the worst concert you went to? Worst concert? Mm. Oh, um, I can totally see them. Yeah. The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald guy. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I should know that. What made it bad? He was just so old. Too old to be performing. <laughs> Called out. I mean, seriously. I should know that guy's name. I thought he was dead. Uh, well. Maybe it's his face. <laughs> I think he was close when yeah. I saw him. <laughs> just tipped over. It's Weekend of Birdies. Somebody's in the back. They got a little puppet thing going. Okay. We, we have to totally bring out a laptop here to look that stuff up. I should know. That was 70s music, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. I don't claim to be a 70s band or a 70s expert, although I play one on TV. <laughs> um, no, it is, it is kind of sad, though, because we're not too far in age. Right. When you see these people that you grew up with, and now they've got major wrinkles, more gray hair than I do. And and yet they still jump up on stage like Rick Springfield. Remember him? Oh yeah. He's like seventy, and he performs with his shirt off. And I mean, he's he's still he's ripped. Wow. Um, but uh, and then you've got people like uh, did you listen to White Snake? Yep. So David Coverdell, that was their lead singer. I saw him on YouTube recently at a concert. And when it comes time to hit the really high notes, he throws the microphone to the crowd because. <laughs> He can't, he can't hit, hit those. those anymore. But then, like, um, Aha, Take On Me. Do you remember that song? Aha. Uh -huh. She's Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they, yeah, I keep singing it. <laughs> Such a good song. But, like, you know, they've got that song and or that, that part in Take On Me where they, he hits a really high note. Well, the new version, the uh, the acoustic version on MTV, is he goes really low. Oh. And, and then it's funny, though. You look at, they, they show all the women in the crowd, and I'm like, yep. Every one of them looks like my wife, but they were, they were just like, oh, <laughs> just like you, you would have thought they were back I, in the day. I can't imagine that song where it goes low instead of that high part. That just well, sounds weird. We'll have to play it. Well, we can't play it because we'll get a copyright strike, but I don't want to sing it. I'm not a good singer, but mm. um, it's interesting to watch, you know, just celebrities in general as, and, and then like, I remember growing up to my mom would go, uh, oh, um, you know. Bob Hope died or something, and you're like, okay, well, they're old, so that's to be expected. But now, um, different people that we grew up with are, you know, are dying, and I you're know. like, what? And even like, like Matthew Perry, he's yeah. he's like two years younger. He died fifty three, fifty four, mm -hmm. and I mean, I I can't say I grew up watching him. He was, let's see, I was out of college, but obviously watched Friends because that was what everybody did. Mm -hmm. um, but you see people that are dying that are near your age or, you know, they were celebrities back then. It's so 
weird. It like makes you really think about mortality and things that you just don't really want to think about. Exactly. Hey, yeah. Remember, we got to bring it back to forever young. Forever young. Forever right. young. Forever yep. Young. We're gonna be forever you young. Do that. We'll be right back. So what uh, what are some of the goals and, and uh, some of the things that you're looking forward to achieving in your role as the executive director? What are some things that that we should all be maybe some alterations that we should be making or helping to make? You know, I think just um, getting uncomfortable, reaching out to someone with a disability, get to know someone with a disability. Yeah. Again, don't be so afraid that you're going to say the wrong thing or use the wrong words. Um, I really am a strong advocate of education. Mm -hmm. I just think the more we can educate others, the more accepting people will be. And I really want to increase the employment rate of people with disabilities. Yes. I yes. mean, it's almost half of what it is for people without disabilities. Sure. And we see we're hiring at how many businesses now, but people are still unwilling to give people with disabilities a try. So I really um, would encourage people to look at the abilities people have instead of focusing on that disability and what somebody can't do. Sure. Take a look at what they can do. Mm -hmm. um, and I powerful. think it's really important to reach out to youth, too. We had our first youth mentoring day oh, in cool. July. And I hope to expand that program so yeah. that youth can go into a business and be mentored by an employee with a disability. So they can see, hey, this person did it. I can do it, too, yeah. and have that experience. That's very cool. Do you go to Costco? No. Um, I, I really beat myself up because I know his name. Corey. Corey, yes. yeah, I know Corey. There we go. There uh -huh. we go. Yeah, like so. Corey's in a wheelchair. I don't know. I I haven't really talked talked to him, but he knows me. At least I think I do. I know him. And, you know, <laughs> typically, like he he would all, always be that guy that would, uh, you know, make sure you got your Costco card as you're walking in. And now he's, well, for a long time he's probably been checking the basket to make sure. You know, you didn't swipe some beer or something like that, <laughs> especially you. But the uh, oh boy, the thing is, is like, I, like I keep uh, there's like a little tabulator in the back of my head because I'm a people watcher, and I'm always like, okay, that person isn't here anymore, and that person isn't here anymore. But Corey is probably the longest tenured employee at Costco, and uh, it looks like he always enjoys his job. I mean, there's something to be said for that. that exactly. I, I think that's very cool. Yeah, and I hear that a lot from businesses like, um, boy, I hired them and they've been here seven years now. I wish I had five more employees like that. Yep. So if you just give them a chance, you know, and a lot of times they struggle so much just to find that job. Mm -hmm. When they do get it, they can thrive and they'll be with you for years. Yeah, so it's yeah. worth the investment. Very cool. Very cool. So are there any other, we're close to our, yeah, so our let's, um, table here. You got so, something? Yeah, so, you know, the theme of our show is the stories that shaped us. So we always want to try and draw that thread from, you know, a past experience from where you were and how that continues to play a role with, with, with what you do today and what you hope to do in the future. So if you got something for us there, a story or uh, some wise words... You know, I just think um, all the limitations that I had when I was younger really led me to where I am today um, because you kind of have to persevere. You have to keep that positive attitude. And as I had less broken bones, I was able to venture out more and more and kind of find my strengths. And I think that's important for anybody. Figure out what your abilities, your skills, your talents are, because we all have them. Maybe they're not as apparent in some of us, and it takes some digging, but I think we all have those gifts. Yeah, that's very cool. I want to grow up and be a rebel like Vicky. <laughs> well, she's got such an innocent-looking face. She could be a bank robber. It helps, let me tell you. <laughs> I use <laughs> oh, yeah, it to my advantage zoom in, zoom in right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, we will. <laughs> We're going to zoom in on that. Yeah, you could be a bank robber. You'd be like, I didn't do it. You're like, yep, she's not. She's innocent. <laughs> so we still have, I want, we got a couple more minutes here. Movies. Did we, we didn't really talk about movies. Any? What were some of the favorite movies growing up? You probably laugh at my list. Like Gone with the Wind. Yeah. It's okay. one of my favorites, but I like scary movies too. So okay. like Halloween. Yep. Um, I watched a couple of the Saw movies. I don't know what I was oh, into whoa. back then. By myself at home, I'm like, <laughs> what are you Did you thinking? actually get scared? Those um, are freaky. They were 
that was more of just a weird one. Like I didn't get yeah. really scared, but like Halloween scared me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was only eight years old when that came out. So, oh gosh, I don't like scary movies at all. So <laughs> really? that's like a jump scare is enough for me. Yeah, Jeez. yeah. But what was the what was the worst movie that you you recall? Okay, this is probably gonna offend some people, but A Fish Called Wanda. All right. I did not like that movie. I'm glad I to just, say I didn't see that. It yeah, didn't look good to me either. Uh, I almost left the theater. Yeah. Yeah, it just was not my deal. A Fish Called Wanda. Never heard of it, but... I don't... I, can, it <laughs> I had, won't recommend uh, it. Okay. <laughs> I can remember some of the people that were in it. I think... Was Jamie Lee Curtis yeah. in that? Yeah, And then the main guy was Kevin... Hmm. Was it like a person who's a fish, or is a fish that was a name, or what, what's what's the deal here? I can see the actor. I just can't place his name. But... Yeah, I know it's kind of. Oh, and then John Cleese, I think, was in that too. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I gotta look it up. I blocked I... it out of my mind. <laughs> well, we were talking last time that like the I just appreciate most movies, but the uh, the never ending story was like the worst movie. I, <laughs> I think it's a pretty solid movie. <laughs> I kind of like it too. Uh, <laughs> Big fluffy so. dragon. <laughs> yeah. I uh, thought that was lies. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was so weird to me. Uh, that was not we, good. We got to start our like a running list of like worst movies that <laughs> our guests have brought up. So, what about movies like maybe in your college uh, era? Movies that made you think. Did you ever see Platoon? No. Wow. Well, she learned how to rob banks from Ocean's 12. <laughs> That's right. Ocean's 12. Yeah. Both the new and the old one. She's got she's got these special contraptions in a wheelchair. She can put them together. And she's Have got you a gun. ever like snuck anything using your chair? Oh, yeah. I think we're on to something. I used to do it quite a bit in college. You know, we were a dry campus, so I be able to put beer cans on the side of so my So you were cushion. everyone's best friend. I told you. I was, yeah. But I then one you. day I rolled into the dorm and they always had somebody at the front desk and one of the beer cans rolled out <laughs> all the way across the floor. I'm like, oops. And you just said, that's not mine. Like, yeah. no, it's not your. It's not I don't your know making. where that came yeah. from. I can't even reach that shelf. I'm just playing kick the can. Yeah, I can't reach that shelf. Jeez. Oh my God. <laughs> Can't take this guy anywhere. Oh. All right. Well, what's your next big venture? Adventure. Adventure. Hmm. You guys travel a lot. We do travel a lot. Yeah. We hope to go someplace warm this winter. Yeah. It's always nice just to get a little reprieve from the winter weather. So yeah. hopefully yeah. we were talking about maybe going to Texas. I wanted to go to Big Bend National Park. Okay. So maybe we'll do something like that. Um, I'm thinking about going back to Ski for Light. A program out in the Black Hills, yeah. um, downhill skiing for people who use wheelchairs and cross-country skiing for people who are blind. Excuse me. Oh. Um, yeah, people come from all over the U.S. That's where my husband and I met, and I haven't been there for a few years, so yeah. thinking about going back for yeah, that. Yeah, so tell us about that. How'd you meet? Can we uh, say this on air? Yeah, we can. Uh, we met. He, he was drunk. <laughs> I gave him too much. The beers that I smuggled in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's more of a rebel than me, so he, uh, yeah. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ski for Light, we met in 1999, I think. That was the first time I had gone. And he was there from Salt Lake City, Utah. So we hung out a bit, um, but never kept in touch or anything. We both ended up going back in 2018. And the sparks flew, and Whoa. now he lives in Sioux Falls. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. 18 years? Yeah. Almost twenty this could years. Be a yeah. movie. I, you could. You, you could be on an episode of The Love Boat. <laughs> oh, the Love Boat. I love The Love Boat. Right? I got a fo uh, yeah photograph off, um, signed by Gopher. Yeah, yeah. That played on Fred, The Love Boat. Fred something, and he was actually uh, he was in uh, Congress. Yeah, in Iowa. That's why I got his signed autograph. Was? Yeah. Fred Mick something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you could totally do that because they always had people that rekindled from high school or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, yep. All right, that's I so like cool. That. Well, we'll have to have you on, and you can tell us more adventures that okay you and the hubby have had, and any other dirty little secrets you care to share. <laughs> <laughs> I have some travel stories that I'd be happy to share. There's we have to do like a happy hour episode with you. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. Do you do that? Yeah. Oh, cool. Our kegerator is ready, willing, and able. There you go. 
Just apparently Catholics don't drink before noon, so we were respecting that, yeah. is what you said. Well, we'll have a new segment. <laughs> Things that Vicky smuggled in with her wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and then that could take the entire show. <laughs> no, I wasn't we, that bad, really. Uh, we need visuals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you just, no, that would be fun. Maybe we should work. We're going to take this show out of the studio and we're going to hide different things in your wheelchair without you even knowing it. I mean, it. being honest, like when, when it's we, not mine. It's when not we mine. flew back to Vietnam, I had to take my grandma, who was, I think, 80 something. She was wheelchair bound. It was like we had a superpower. We passed through everything in the airport. They put us on the, every, and we could put all this stuff on her chair. And it was like, wow, like, and we passed through all security. Like, no one cared. We just went through everything. I was like, huh. So I feel like, you know, superpower right there. Yeah, there's definitely perks. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's All right, I'll well, take us out, Big Dog. All righty. Big Dog today. I got a new nickname every show. <laughs> I try to come on something special. Makes it feel good. <laughs> well, viewers, thank you again for tuning in. As always, um, stay engaged, stay curious. Check out Vicky and what she does on our show notes below. And also, if you haven't had a chance, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That always helps us reach up more of an audience. And also on YouTube, where you can see all the visuals of all the things that these folks are talking about that I don't know. Including Vicky's uh, physical outfit there. Oh, yeah. So what's your shirt say? We're all pretty bizarre. All Some of us are, us oh, are, are just, just better at hiding it. That's all. The Breakfast Club. Totally the Breakfast Club. Right there. Oh, there you go. Totally we haven't even thought about that. Yeah. All right. Well, then, friends, until next time, stay engaged, and we'll see you on Nostalgia Street. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. If you're on iTunes, please take a moment and leave us a rating and review. Head on over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. You'll get access to engaging visuals that complement our podcast content. Thanks again for tuning in, and we look forward to having you with us on our next episode. So until next time, listeners, stay curious, stay engaged. Never stop walking down Nostalgia Street.